Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. In the last tutorial, we have discussed about method overloading, method overriding, polymorphism and types of polymorphism with real life example as well as practical example. Okay. And all the links I have mentioned in the description of this video, you can go through it. Okay. And now in this tutorial, we are going to discuss about difference between method overloading and method overriding. And this is very important topic because this question is frequently asked in many interviews as well as in exam also. Okay. And I notice that most of the beginners get confused between method overloading and method overriding. That's why I have decided to make a video on this topic in a simple way so that it might help to clear the confusion and beginners can grab it easily. Okay. So let's get started. So here we are going to discuss the difference between method overloading and method overriding. So basically we are going to do the comparison between method overloading and method overriding, right? And for a comparison, we need to put both the concepts together to find out similarities and differences between them. So let's bring both the concepts together. Now see here, this is the concept of method overloading and this is the concept of method overriding. Okay. Now see here, I have created one add value method in a test class. Okay. And this method take two integer types of parameters. And again, I have created a method with same name and this method takes three integer types of parameters. Okay. And again, I have created one more method with same name and this method takes two float type of parameters okay so here i have create three methods with same name but different parameters okay and this concept is nothing but the method overloading so basically these are the overloaded methods okay so if we notice here all the methods have a same name right so point is that in method overloading method name must be same now see here, this method takes two integer type of parameters, right? This method takes three integer types of parameters and this method takes two float types of parameters, right? That means all three methods taking different parameters, right? So basically point is that in method overloading parameters must be different. Now see here, the return type of this method is void and the return type of this method is also void but the return type of this method is float so basically point is that in method overloading return type of methods either can be same or different now see here all the overloaded methods i have defined in a single class that is in a test class no other class is involved here right so basically point is that in method overloading only one class is involved right that means method overloading occur within a single class. And next point is that method overloading is an example of compile time polymorphism. Because in method overloading, which method has to be invoked or execute is resolved or decided at compile time by compiler. That already we have discussed in previous tutorial in detail. Now let's move on the next point. Okay. Now imagine if you want to write a large program that has a many methods of a different name. So in this case, it become more difficult for programmers to remember the name of each method, right? But in case of method overloading, programmers doesn't need to remember the name of each method because in method overloading, all the methods have a same name. And hence, programmers doesn't need to remember the name of each method. And due to this, the code become more easy to read and understand. That means code become more readable. So basically, point is that the main purpose of method overloading is it improve the code readability. Now let's move on another concept and it's method overriding. Okay. Now see here, I have created here one method apply paint in a parent class that is in a vehicle class. And the definition of this method is applying white color paint to the vehicle. And same method I have created here in a child class. Okay. But here I have changed the definition of this method and it's applying red color paint to the car. Okay. 
that means i have modified or redefined this parent class method in its child class okay and to redefine or to modify the parent class method in its child class is nothing but the method overriding so if we notice here both the methods have a same name right so point is that in method overriding also the method name must be same now see here this method takes one string type of parameter okay and this method also take one string type of parameter so basically point is that in method overriding the parameters must be same but in case of method overloading parameters must be different okay now see here the return type of this method is void and the return type of this method is also void that means return type of both the methods are same so point is that in method overriding return type must be same but java version 5.0 onwards the return type of overriding methods either can be same or covariant that means before 5.0 version a return type of child class method should be exactly same as that of parent class method but onward 5.0 version java support covariant return type for overriding methods and what is covariant return type i will explain in upcoming tutorial so for now just keep in mind in method overriding return type of method either can be same or covariant okay now let's move on another point okay now see here i have create here one method apply paint in a parent class that is in a vehicle class and same method i have override in a child class that is in a car class that means in method overriding two classes are involved one parent class and one child class and i have used here extend keyword okay and this extend keyword represent that both the parent class that is vehicle class and child class that is a car class is in inheritance relationship and inheritance occur between two classes so basically point is that in method overriding two classes are involved and next point is that the method overriding is an example of runtime polymorphism because in method overriding which method has to be invoked or execute is resolved or decided at runtime by jvm so point is that method overriding is an example of runtime polymorphism now see here the definition of this method is applying white color paint to the vehicle that means the job of this method is to apply white color paint to the vehicle but i don't want to apply white color paint to the car because i want to apply the red color paint to the car that's why i have override this parent class method in a child class that is in a car class and change the definition of this method and it's applying red color paint to the car okay that means i have modify or redefine parent class method in a child class as per my requirement right so point is that the purpose of method overriding is it allow us to modify or to redefine parent class method in a child class as per requirement now i am going to summarize all these differences okay now see here first let's take a method name in method overloading method name must be same and in method overriding also method name must be same okay so note this point in both the cases method name must be same now let's take a parameters in method overloading parameters must be different but in method overriding parameters must be same now let's take a return type in method overloading return type either can be same or different and in method overriding return type either can be same or covariant okay now let's see the class involved okay in method overloading only one class is involved and in method overriding two classes are involved parent class and child class right now let's see the purpose so the purpose of method overloading is 
fact it improve the code readability and the purpose of method overriding is it allow to modify or to redefine parent class method in a child class as per requirement okay now let's see the example so the method overloading is an example of compile time polymorphism and the method overriding is an example of runtime polymorphism so these are the differences between method overloading and method overriding okay and if you want to memorize all these differences quickly then you should go through sequentially that means just keep this sequence in mind first compare the method name and then compare the parameters and then a return type okay and then classes involved and then compare the purpose of both the concept and at the end compare the example of polymorphism whether it is compile time polymorphism or runtime polymorphism that's it i hope it will be helpful for you to clear the confusion between method overloading and method overriding and for more help you can refer my notes regarding to this topic that i have mentioned in the description of this video now i am going to end this session so keep learning keep growing and thank you so much for watching